Fighting John Everson Logic, since I'm the second speaker of the day, this now starts the PM portion of our services. And since we normally finish at about seven o'clock, by my count, I've got just under four hours to get my presentation in. So the good news is we're just going to make it. I do appreciate uh, your, uh, your time this afternoon. Uh, we are going to uh, look at 2023 uh, very briefly, spend uh, more time on 2024 and beyond, talking about the things that are uh, yet to come. Of course, the elders for our congregation uh, annually asked me to uh, spend a few minutes talking about uh, the, the past year, where we are, looking at uh, budget numbers for 2024 for the next year as we would go forward. So I'm going to review uh, some of that uh, with you this afternoon. First comment that I have to make is thank you for your continued efforts and for the strong financial support that this congregation uh, does receive and does enjoy. We continue uh, to do things. I appreciate Bob's comments uh, uh, toward the very end of his sermon when he made the comment about, you know, when you pray, don't limit, put limitations on God and don't be afraid to ask for things and stuff. What's interesting is we've accomplished uh, things that I would have probably in my own feeble human mind have said they were uh, impossible uh, to accomplish, but uh, we have, um, have, have done very well. So uh, our first key message is 2023 was a very strong year. Uh, our financial foundation is very strong. There are exciting opportunities that are ahead of us, uh, but there's more to do to prepare th for the future that we're headed toward. So very quickly, uh, our contributions for 2023, $410,847. Of that, uh, we considered $348,400 was the budgeted amount, uh, and then the amount that was added to capital campaign, that excess, at $62,448. And so if you think about this, $348,400 is what we had uh, budgeted, $410,000 is what the contributions totaled. Our weekly budget uh, target that we had last year, $6,700 per week, when in fact our average for the year was actually $7,900 per week. That is a $1,200 per week excess beyond what was budgeted. So I do commend uh, this congregation uh, for that. Time back to Bob's message, which is be careful of the limitations that you, um, you do put on uh, God and the work that, uh, that uh, needs to be done. We take a look at, <clears throat> excuse me, where we are. Our total cash flow for 2023, though, totaled 446,000 and some change. And you can see the breakdown there. Uh, the uh, budgeted amount, the capital campaign, that excess. We also earned this past year $35,000, uh, a little over $35,000 of earned interest on the capital campaign dollars that we have already uh, accrued and accumulated. Those dollars are in fact working, actually working uh, fairly hard. I'm gonna talk about that here in, in just a bit, but a total uh, cash flow for the congregation this past year at 446,000. Now, when you take those numbers and you look at where we are in relationship to what we spent, the normal budget expenses, what was run through our normal budget expenses, totaled uh, 363,000, some change. That's a deficit at about 14,000. So you would, it'd be easy to look at that and say, well, John, how can you tell us we're in great shape when clearly we went over? Be careful because some of that overage was in fact future spending. So those were dollars that easily could have been uh, pulled from the capital campaign funds, but they simply weren't. They were simply run through uh, regular budget expenses. And, uh, but we are in very good shape in terms of uh, what our cash flow is relative to our normal operating expenses, okay? So if you don't hear anything else beyond that, just remember uh, that. Now, so 2024, where does that leave us then? Uh, so the uh, elders, the deacons, the ministers met back in, I guess started in November, uh, through the month of December, went through, put all the numbers together, the target for this year, what we're asking for, is $7,700 per week. That's a total a budget amount of $400,400, $7,700 per week. We know that's achievable because it's actually $200 less than what we did uh, per week last year in 2023. So we know that's uh, possible. Any excess beyond that, 
again, is going to wind up being earmarked as part of the capital campaign. So I guess my challenge to you is not to say that the budget is 7,700 because we're actually lowering uh, the target from where we were, but to use that 7,900 and to challenge you how far beyond that can we go, which you're going to see here in a minute is going to be important that we prove whether or not that is, uh, is achievable. So let's talk about going forward. What's next? So if you were listening to Bob's sermon last Sunday morning uh, and you had not heard this sort of through the grapevine and just some, uh, some, some word around the, the building here, uh, we do currently have uh, the, the house next door, 37 Legato Drive, uh, under contract to purchase. As it says there on the screen, uh, closing is scheduled for January 31st, 2024 at a price of $275,000. And you'll notice by note, it is significantly less than the appraised value. Now, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about that transaction because I want everybody to understand what has taken place there. Uh, here, before I finish this afternoon, I'm going to read the first week of the legal notification of the church's intent to purchase real estate. Next week, we'll be reading number two that the state of West Virginia does require. At the end of that reading next week, uh, you will be asked to stand as a, uh, a sign of affirmation of that intent to make that real estate purchase. So I just want to kind of go ahead and plant that seed. So if you're watching online today, I'm not going to ask anybody to stand, but next, next week uh, we will. So let me tell you about the, the, the transaction, how this uh, unfolded. And I have to give uh, credit here. Buddy Leeser, Mark Everson, and myself were uh, the folks involved in the direct uh, contact with that, that uh, real estate owner next door. And how this uh, unfolded back in toward the end of September, we happened to notice that we knew that the, the homeowner had moved out of that property and had been renting it. And so he had tenants in there. We noticed the property was vacant. If you notice, the windows were open as if they were trying to air the house out and stuff, which may have been the case as well. But nonetheless, so we were trying to get a hold of uh, the property owner. The phone number that we had had for them uh, was no longer a good number. We didn't know how to get a hold of them. I think Mark walked over and put a note on the front door. Hey, give us a call. We'd like to talk about your property. And so a few days later, uh, he called and said, uh, yeah, what's, uh, what's up? And, and, you know, so Mark expressed, you know, we'd like to uh, sit down and talk to you and find out you know, kind of what your thinking is. So sometime in the probably middle of October, uh, we sat down, Mark, Buddy Leeser, and myself sat down with uh, Tim LeHue and basically said, what are you doing with the property? Here's, we, we need you to know what's happening next door. Soon, you may start to see flags and stakes and ribbon and so forth out in the yard uh, so forth. He was well aware of the fact that we had purchased the property to our immediate south here that also wrapped around to the south of his property. And so he was well aware of that. And we basically said, look, here's the deal. We've already begun uh, some of the engineering work on improving our parking facilities. That parking lot is going to be down here at the end of that building, in effect, behind your house. The access point into that is probably going to be the driveway for the cottage as it is now. So your house is going to be circled with traffic on a continual basis. Our parking lot will be lit. We're just letting you know this in advance. So we said, you know, what's, what's your intent? We know it's, we, the property is vacant right now. And so he expressed uh, that, well, if you guys are interested in buying, uh, I might be interested in talking. And as you recall, we had first approached uh, that property owner in the summer of 2020. There were two parcels that were in effect for sale. That house, he had consideration, but what he needed out of that at the time was simply not feasible for what we were going to be paying for 0.39 acres of real estate. We wound up for less money than we could have bought that 0.39 acres. We bought 2.68 acres to our immediate south, if you go to where the basketball court is, uh, going south. Because of that purchase, we, and this was not by design or it wasn't intended, we surrounded that house. 
So that's why we wanted to make sure he was aware of here's what's about to happen. So we told him that we were beginning to move forward with engineering. And he basically said, uh, we were prepared in that meeting in October to make an offer. We were prepared until he said, Zillow tells me right now that a Zestimate on that property is $382,000. And the number we were prepared to float was significantly lower than that. I, be honest with you, I was embarrassed to utter our number. And we didn't because we needed to reconvene. So we did. We said, look, let us uh, take everything we've heard and we'll, uh, we'll let you know. Fast forward about a week later, we sent him a, a, an email with an offer, 275000 no contingencies, no appraisal, no inspection, no financing contingency clauses, nothing, 275000 We also uh, sweetened the deal, uh, the offer a little bit. We'll cover your closing costs up to a maximum of $7,000. We're willing to put $282,000 on the table. A few days later, we got a reply uh, that indicated he was, uh, wouldn't accept our number, but he was not totally disappointed with our number. So that, of course, sent us back to uh, uh, another meeting. And for you wives of deacons and trustees and elders, I apologize for all of the, we only need just a couple of minutes after services tonight to talk about this, meetings that took place. So um, Jason's back in the hallway smiling. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. So ultimately, we, we uh, called the, the property owner and said, we'd like to sit down and uh, talk to you again. When we sat back down with him, we said, here's, the, um, here's what we'd like to do. Uh, our initial offer of $275,000, we're going to enhance that by $500. And here's what we want you to do with that $500. You said that Zillow says that property is worth three eighty two. dollars I personally thought it was worth maybe between 325 and 350. There was no way that that property was worth 382. Okay, so we gave him 500 dollars and said, "Go get an appraisal. If that appraisal comes back and says and identifies what that appraiser is willing to certify on an Internal Revenue Service form, form 8283, you can go look that up. That is the form where a taxpayer would claim a non-cash charitable contribution." So in effect, what we were saying was, we're willing to give you $275,000 of cash for that house and the 0.39 acres that it sits on. Whatever that appraisal says the value of that property happens to be above that number, you can claim that as a tax deduction. Now, Form 8283 uh, for the IRS requires basically uh, multiple things, three things in effect. Taxpayer has to make a charitable contribution, number one. Number two, an appraiser, especially if it's real estate, has to be willing to sign that form certifying, this is what my professional opinion is, that the value of that real estate happens to be. And then the charity, the church, will need to sign that form simply acknowledging we are a qualifying Section 170 organization, which we are, okay? We're not certifying the value of that property. The appraiser's doing that. We're simply acknowledging we're a qualifying charity. We have a letter of determination. That property did not appraise at $325,000 like I thought it would. It did not appraise at $350,000 like I thought maybe it would. It did not appraise at $382,000. It appraised at $480,000. We're paying $275,000 for that property. Now, we told him before this started, whatever the, the appraisal comes in at, our offer is 275. Anything above that, basically you're going to harvest that as a tax benefit on your tax return. It was during that discussion we became uh, aware of the fact that this gentleman is a CPA. So he, while he does, he does more uh, corporate uh, work and so forth, but he has a pretty good understanding of the tax code. And by the time we started uh, putting numbers together. It came down to the fact that, um, that that's a pretty significant tax savings that he's looking at. So what he's basically, how this is unfolding. In three and a half weeks, we're going to pay $275,000 of cash for that house next door. Now, real quick. So we're buying that at $205,000 less than its appraised value. 
I don't care what number the appraiser is certifying because they're signing that on his tax return. We are not. Okay? So that number, good for him. $205,000, though, we're purchasing below appraised value. We bought the 2.68 acres at $75,000, less than what it was listed for three years ago. So the point that I really want to kind of uh, get across this afternoon is we will have acquired those two parcels of property uh, for uh, about $280,000 less than either what the asking price or the appraised value of that real estate was. Now, getting that house, once that house has been secured, uh, the next thing that obviously uh, comes into play is um, removing that structure. So if you'd like some logs, let us know because we're soon to have some available because that structure will be removed and there are some things in that structure that may have some tangible value. If you happen to know somebody that would like some logs, please refer them to us. We'd, we'd love to, uh, to talk to them. So we talk, t take a look at where we are and as we go forward, we know that we're about to acquire 37 Legato Drive. Soon, I don't know how soon, it may take us a while because uh, permits to do anything in the city of Martinsburg is not an easy uh, thing to achieve. So removing that property is going to take some, some time. Um, once that's uh, done, then there's going to be uh, parking improvements, architectural design work is, uh, is scheduled to, uh, to begin. But at the same time, we have to prepare for the expiration of the note for 71 Legato Drive. Uh, that's in October of 2025. So that's the, uh, the note that we currently hold for the 2.68 acres. It's the, uh, the first acquisition we made uh, three and a half, uh, about almost three and a half years ago, where the cottage is, uh, is on that property at the present time. So let's take a look at what's about to happen to the capital campaign funds. So this morning you're going to be given a copy of the budget, uh, the balance sheet that shows here's what our current cash balances are and all of that. You're going to notice that right now the capital campaign uh, has uh, just under $900,000 of funds available in it. Here's what's about to occur, though. $282,000, $275,000 plus closing costs, no more than $7,000. That's, that's in the contract. So a maximum of $282,000 will be uh, used to secure that property. Greenway Engineering, who is the engineering firm that we've been using, uh, we have a, an estimate from them for the parking improvements at 663000 Now, before you gasp at that number and before people start to have, I don't want Jason to have to go grab that AED device off of the, uh, the wall back there and start shocking people back to life, that is, that is total cost for anything that would be external to a building addition. So it's all of the for where the parking would be, for all of the excavation, for the grading work, for the stormwater management. It's some of the stormwater management that the building would require. It is uh, all of the, uh, uh, the asphalt, it's, it's curb and guttering, it's lighting, it's everything. A to Z, landscaping, it is, it is uh, an estimate in totality. We know that not all of that necessarily needs to be done immediately. The city will allow us to uh, make a parking area to gravel that while we're still under construction. But once that construction is completed of an addition to the building, then that, uh, that parking area would have to be paved. So not all of that 663 would be spent at one time, but our engineer is saying, yeah, that realistically for, for what you, you need, that's about what it's going to cost. So surprising numbers. 71 Legato Drive has a current outstanding balance of 245000 and some loose change. We have no idea what it's going to cost to remove the structure, architectural design work. We still don't know those numbers. Here's the point that I make. When you look at our balance sheet here in a little bit, you're going to say, wow, we're in great shape. We've got almost $900,000. No, we don't. We're in the hole about 300000 by the time you take a look at the things that are immediately at hand, the things that are yet to take place. Let me remind you, we haven't dug any footers for any addition, any retrofitting of, of this facility. We've done nothing yet other than get some real estate, uh, create the buffer that we need for uh, what we have planned, number one, and some uh, improvement to the parking area. So we have a long way to go when you, uh, you start to look at it like that. I'm going to read you a passage, Luke 14, verse 28 through 30. Uh, for which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. 
Last, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish? We do not want to be that person, that entity, that, uh, and, and I assure you we will, we will not be. So what if we expanded and started these modifications and we started moving forward right now? Here's the reality of where we are. Current construction loan interest rates, in other words, while you are under construction, cost of borrowed money, now not all that is at one time, it's as you draw down money, currently runs between 10 to 15 percent during that construction phase. That's before you would then go to permanent financing. Typically, you don't cover those costs out of pocket. That accrues to and becomes part of then what would be uh, amortized as your mortgage then going forward. Here's the problem. Commercial interest rates today right now run somewhere between 6 to 10%, depending upon a lot of variables. The loan-to-value ratios, uh, your financial standing, how much uh, risk the bank is willing to assume. Let me remind everybody that commercial loans, commercial real estate loans, everything, there is no such thing as permanent financing. So, for example, your mortgage you finance it at X percent fixed at that rate for a 30-year window of time. That happens on residential mortgages. That does not happen on commercial real estate loans. Rates are renewable, so your rate is good for about a five-year window of time. That's why the note on 71 Legato Drive right now, we are paying 3.94% on the cost of that borrowed money. The money that we have from the capital campaign that's currently on deposit, we're actually earning 5.15% on that money. We're actually earning more money on deposited funds than what we're paying on borrowed funds at the moment. If this was October 2025 when that first renewal window is up, I assure you that rate will not be 3.94%. We're probably going closer to 7 to 8 would be my guess if that were happening today. So our interest rate would roughly double on uh, what the cost of that borrowed money is. That's why we need to be prepared when that note is due for renewal. We need to be able to uh, perhaps pay that off. The other comment that I want to make is that when you start getting into uh, commercial real estate loans, your house, you could amortize that note for 30 years. Commercial uh, rates, the longest uh, amortization window is a 20-year window of time. And again, your renewal is going to be, your, your rate is going to be re reviewed every three to five years. So there's no such thing as permanent financing. And I don't care what lending institution you talk to, because I've, I've, I've dealt with those things uh, on a personal basis uh, over, uh, over many years. So, so the costs are exorbitant. So let's go forward. Let's, let's say, okay, let's say we, uh, we had uh, moved forward and we've just... Uh, added onto the building, we've uh, put a parking lot in for the cash that we've got for, you know, by the time you, you take off the, the things that we know that we're going to spend money for, and everything is, is turnkey and we're handed the key to uh, the new front door, which is going to be somewhere over here, and we then have a debt service at two and a half million dollars. Let me show you the reality of what that means. Two and a half million dollars at six percent is a $17,910 per month mortgage payment. That's $18,000 a month, every month. That adds to our budget need an extra. This is not part of what's already in our budget. This is extra beyond what we're doing now, another $4,133 each and every week. If the interest rate happens to be 8% on that $2.5 million, your monthly mortgage payment just went to just under $21,000. That adds to uh, your weekly budget amount, an extra 4,800 every single week that must come in. Interest rates, and this is interesting, when this we, we first moved into this building 38 years ago, however long it's been now, our interest rate at the time was 9.5%. You apply that rate, I round it up to 10%. That's a $24,000 per month mortgage payment. You multiply that out, that's about 300000 just shy of $300,000 per year just for the debt service. That doesn't pay the light bill. It doesn't pay for any, you know, class material, any expenses. No expenses otherwise to operate. That's just for debt service. So the point that I want to make this morning is we're in great shape, but where we're headed 
we've got, uh, it's an uphill climb. So I appreciate Bob's comment this morning with regard to don't limit uh, God in terms of the things that we would expect and what we would ask for. So what can we do now? You can see my first bullet point was pray for our future and the opportunities that are ahead. Um, pray like you mean it. Pray like you expect God to be able to fulfill what those, uh, those needs are going to be. Continue the strong financial support that we uh, get on a weekly basis, an annual basis. For the last several years, things have been really good. We do uh, appreciate that. We do need that to continue. We need, you need to start to prepare yourself for another focused capital campaign because there's no way that we can achieve this if we don't. Think about this. If we were to put up a, a structure that was going to, say, uh, run us uh, $2.5 million, but we had $1.5 million of cash already accrued, before we made that addition, where you're now only servicing a million dollars worth of debt, that's achievable. But we're going to have to start to accumulate funds in advance because we cannot simply finance this thing uh, from, from, uh, you know, from scratch and do it that way because there simply is not enough cash flow as things stand at the moment. So prepare for another capital campaign. Give careful consideration to extraordinary events that might occur with you from time to time. So if you get a bonus, an inheritance, a settlement, a buyout, uh, you sell a piece of real estate, something where you have resources that, that you know, you've got to make a decision about that is beyond your normal cash flow, your, your, you know, your month to month uh, financial support. Give serious thought to those uh, opportunities because some of that is, is going to have to happen in order for us to make uh, things achievable. Also, once you hit the age of 70 and a half, carefully consider using qualified charitable distribution contributions, um, or it should be distributions, uh, QCD. You would think that I, I, you wouldn't know that I actually do that stuff for a living since I can't even put the, uh, the name of the qualified charitable distribution on there. My point though is that, you know, we've got, um, there are a lot of opportunities ahead in front of us, but it will not be without an awful lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of, uh, a lot of prayer, a lot of faith uh, in, um, in where we are. So great things are ahead, but we do need to be patient. Let me read the first. This is going to be the first reading of the uh, legal notification. Since I've gone a little long, Josh, I'm going to ask uh, maybe if we can just dis uh, scratch that last song. So Ryan, as soon as I'm done, uh, if you'd be ready to, uh, with that closing prayer, that'd be great. Notice is hereby given that on or following the 31st day of January 2024, the trustees of the Central Church of Christ will purchase the following described property for a cash purchase, per, for a cash purchase price of $275,000 as set forth in the attached contract of sale. See contract of sale for any and all terms and conditions. A copy of that sales contract will be on the bulletin board uh, out in the lobby. Uh, Mark, I sent him a text there a minute ago, said he was going to put that up there. 47 Legato Drive, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Um, 47 Legato Drive, Martinsburg, West Virginia, 25403, and being further described as Lot 1, containing 0 0.3796 acre, more or less, and being the same real estate conveyed to Timothy W. LeHue by deed dated March 6, 2020, recorded in the office of the clerk of the County Commission of Berkeley County, West Virginia, in deed book, uh, 1281 at page 68. Subject to, however, all utility easements and rights of way of record and in existence. And further, affiants say that the purchase of said property was voted upon by the congregation of said church at a meeting of the same held on January 7th, 2024 and January 14th, 2024, and that said purchase was approved by said congregation in conformity with the rules and um, ecclesiastical policy of said church. This same legal agreement will be read again next Sunday. Upon Once that has been read, we are going to ask that people would rise just as a, uh, uh, an affirmation that you're in agreement with, um, with that. That's all I have. If you have questions... Mark can answer questions, Buddy Leeser can answer questions, Ed can answer questions. Uh, certainly I can, more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. I know there's a lot of information here. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, the future is bright. Uh, things are moving forward. And, uh, but do continue to um, uh, keep everything that we're doing in your prayers. Thank you.